Hello, Santa Sino parents. Uh, my name is David Shiner, and I'm going to show you a few different resources that you can use to support your child um, during this distance learning and virtual learning taking place today. So the first thing I'd like to show you is a location where you can find your own video tutorials to help support your child. So the first place I'm going to go is to the San Jacinto Unified School District's website. So at sanacindo.com k12.ca.us, there is a section called distance learning. When you select distance learning, it takes you to our distance learning webpage. In here, there are parent videos that will help you support your child at home. So let me just show you some of the videos that I'm talking about. So in here, we have in both English and Spanish, different video tutorials to help support your child related to Google Meets through Google Classroom. Google Meet tutorial for parents and students, a Google Meet parent guide, beginning Google Classroom for students and parents, parents guide to Google Classroom, and many more videos that you can see here that you can just select. So for example, I'll just go ahead and select one right now. And it'll either take you to YouTube or to another video for you to watch. So. Hello, thanks for watching. This demo we're going to show students and parents. So there's a whole list of these videos available for you to watch, again, both in English and Spanish. Other things I'd like to talk to you about are some of those same programs, but kind of talk to you about how they're being used. So the different resources we're going to cover here are Clever, Google Classroom, Google Apps for Education, GoGuardian, Google Meet and Zoom, the Aries Portal, iReady, and Gaggle. So the first one I want to talk about is Clever. So Clever is our single sign-on tool for students to use. They use this every day when they first log into their computer. So when they open up their Chromebook each day to get into their classes, the first thing they log into is Clever. And they do that by using their Google account. So in the top right corner, you can see here, log in with Google. Now, once they log in, they see a portal similar to what you see right here. There'll be teacher pages across the top. Those are the different teachers that are supporting your child in the classroom virtually. So some teachers will put resources inside that folder. There'll be different links that will be provided to your child for them to get easy access to different programs that that, that teacher is using. The other essential elements you can see there is Google Classroom, iReady, McGraw-Hill, Aries Portal. These are all the different approved applications that the district has approved, and these are the programs that your child will be using on a daily basis. The first one, though, is Google Classroom. Before we go into that, though, I do want to talk about the new Clever Family Portal. So this is a new portal for families to use that helps simplified logins at home. It's one place for important information. It allows families to communicate with the teachers, and it also allows to see what your students are seeing on a daily basis. Now, the district sent out information regarding this at the beginning of the school year. You should have received an email on how to join this portal. We'll be sending this information out again in the near future, so keep a lookout for this in your email. Now, the most important tool is Google Classroom. Google Classroom is the virtual classroom for your child from each of your teachers. So inside the Google Classroom, you will notice and see each, each of your child's classrooms and classes. So their science, their math, their language arts, their social studies, and their, even their PE and elective courses all have a Google Classroom in there in the, in the application. This is used to for the teacher to send out assignments, to post the link for Zoom or the Google Meet, quizzes, pretty much anything that your child needs will be in the Google Classroom. Now, how the Google Classroom works, though, it's organized by different types of streams and different areas. So the two biggest areas to get used to is the stream and the Classworks page. So the stream is a running stream of announcements. So you'll see things in there from the beginning of the school year, and it does it chronological. So you'll see the most recent posts first across the top. And as you scroll down the stream, 
you'll see from the very beginning of the school year. So the stream may be pretty long depending on the teacher. The place where though most of the assignments are posted is in the classworks page. The classwork page allows, your, allows the teacher to stay organized and provide topics related to the content of the subject. So for example, some teachers might use week six, week five, week four, and so forth, and post the assignments like that. Other teachers might use Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Each teacher is a little bit different on how they're organizing their classworks page. But the classworks page is where you'll find most of the assignments posted. You'll also find links to either quizzes or other assignments. And also, this is a place where your child can also submit work back. So if there's an assignment that's posted in the Classworks page and there's a due date, that Classworks, that, that actual assignment will get submitted back to the Google Classroom. So students are getting their work and submitting their work through the Classworks page in the Google Classroom. So this is an example of the topics I was talking about. So topics allow teachers to organize and then also adds it to the stream. So this is just an example I pulled out. As you can see, this particular one has today's work and then general information as some of the topics. So it's just an easy way for the teacher to stay organized with the, with the assignments they are posting. But there should be something in there every single day and your child should be looking in the Google Classroom on a daily basis, also each period. So just like we're in school, students need to be appearing and checking their Google Classroom each day, each period, to make sure they get attendance credits. Now the other things being used is Google Apps for Education. Google Apps for Education is how a lot of the assignments are being done. So for example, Gmail can be used by your student or by your child to send emails to the teacher. You can also, as a parent, send emails to the teacher. So every student has a Gmail account. And if, again, if your child is struggling or has Wi-Fi or internet issues, please email the teacher to let them know. Also, the calendar. Calendar is a very important feature. Notice on the top here, there's a thing called a waffle. When you go in the Google, you'll see that on the top right-hand side of the page. This will get you to all the different apps being used. One of them will be the Google, will be the calendar. Another one will be Gmail. Anytime there's an assignment posted in the Google Classroom, it'll also be posted on their, on their Google Calendar as well. The assignment due date will appear in the Google Calendar. So it's a great tool for you to check to see what assignments your child needs to complete to get credit for the assignments. Other things that are being used is the Google Drive and Google Docs. So again, using the waffle will get you to the Google Drive. The Google Drive is where all your child's work is being saved. Anything that they are doing in Google will be saved in their Google Drive. So if it's a Google Doc, which is the word processing tool to type out papers, that would be in there. Uh, Google Sheets is a spreadsheet program. And Google Slides is like PowerPoint, which is a slideshow. If your child is using these programs on a daily basis, those assignments will be found in your child's Google Drive. So these are good tools for you to check to see how your child is doing by going to your child's Google Drive and seeing what's completed and what's not being completed. So really quickly, I want to talk about synchronous and asynchronous learning and GoGuardian. So synchronous learning is that students are all learning at the same time. This is how this is like using Google Meet or Zoom to do live instruction over the computer. That is considered synchronous learning. So any type of video conferencing, live chat or live stream through Meets, through Zoom or even maybe through GoGuardian would be synchronous learning. Asynchronous learning is just the opposite. Students learn at different times and it may be students are have an assignment to complete. Maybe it's a flip grid, or it could be a screencast for them to watch with some questions for them to answer. It could be just a slideshow, or again, it could just be something for them to read, or it could be something for them to complete, like a project. So synchronous learning, again, is live 
video instruction that is taking place live by the teacher. And asynchronous is the opposite where students are watching a video and they're not actually logging into a live video conference. During asynchronous time is when they should be making sure that they are logging into their Google Classroom each day during that period to see what has been posted for that for your child to complete. Now, GoGuardian is a great tool that a lot of our teachers are using as well. GoGuardian is a way for the teacher to monitor what your child is doing during class time. Many of our teachers are using GoGuardian for both synchronous and asynchronous learning. So during synchronous time, someone is monitoring to see what your child is doing during the live instruction. It may be the teacher aide, it may be the teacher themselves, and they can see what the child, what your child is doing during that live instruction. So for example, if your child is on YouTube or playing a game, the teacher will be able to see that and turn it off through GoGuardian. They can also send a chat or a video conferencing call to your child to also notify them of their behavior and what they are doing, or even to just help and provide extra support. So some teachers are using GoGuardian to pull in small groups or to have one-on-one -on -one tutorial time, tutoring time, um, to provide that extra support as well. So GoGuardian is being used in many different ways and is a great tool uh, that they're using with your child. So again, what it does, it connects with the students, uh, delivers instructions through audio, video, chat, or virtual lecture. It keeps, teacher, it keeps your child focused. So uh, students are doing what, what they're, see what they're doing on their devices and keep them on task, even while video conferencing. And it also allows them to stay in control. So teachers at, at the classroom level can actually mute mics, uh, turn off a website that they're on, things like that. So during synchronous learning, teachers are using most, most are using Zoom or Google Meet. That link should be provided in the Google Classroom. Your child just clicks on the link and then they are making and then they get logged into the actual meeting. Now in Zoom, the teacher needs to let them into the meeting. So they're actually there's a waiting room that your child will go into. And then the teacher will bring them from the waiting room into the live meeting. Google Meets doesn't have the waiting room yet. So Google Meets, um, it just allows them to get into the, the live meeting right away. So both good programs, both easy for the ch your child to access, but have different settings uh, throughout the process. Now it's really important when they are on online learning that they follow the expectations. So we have these online meeting expectations that you see here. And as a reminder, the schedule is here on the side. So again, each day your child is reporting to each period just like they were in a regular classroom. But some of the different online expectations is to make sure your child's on time, make sure they're in a quiet place or have headphones on when they're doing their online meetings. They need to be prepared. They need to make sure that their computer is charged, the camera is on. One of the big things right now is a lot of students are not turning on their cameras. This allows, this, this, this makes, if, this, if the camera is off, the teacher does not know if your child is actually paying attention unless they're using GoGuardian. But also, we don't know if they're involved or not. We want our, our students to be actively engaged when they're doing online learning. So having the camera on allows that engagement to take place. So we are asking to make sure that your child has their camera turned on. Also, since the camera is on and this is live instruction, we need to make sure we still wear appropriate clothing. We need to make sure we're sitting straight up and we need to make sure we are in the view of the camera. Also, we need to make sure we mute ourselves. We want to make sure we're using good behavior when we're online. We want to make sure that we're not talking throughout the process, that we're not posting anything inappropriate, um, and that we're not playing any music or anything like that as well. So we want to keep the mute on to, so there's no distractions for the rest of the class. Because when the mute is not turned on, everyone can hear exactly what's happening in the background. The participation is also important. We want to make sure that students are still collaborating, answering questions, that they're focused, attentive, and that they're active participants. And again, I mentioned the chat feature. We want to make sure that students are chatting appropriately. 
So if there has been some guidelines set up, making sure that, for example, in Zoom, other students can't see what the what the chat, what students are posting in the chat. Only the teacher can see it. And then communication, we want to make sure we're speaking clearly, uh, that we're looking up when speaking, uh, and then we stay focused. One of the tips is just look at the camera. Don't look at the screen, stare at the camera. And the last thing, the Bobcat way, be respectful, be responsible, be safe. Now, here are some other expectations as well. Very similar. These are Google Meets and Zoom meeting manners. So again, the first one you see there is making sure you turn on the camera and the sound. We want to make sure that we see your child actively participating. Also, be aware of your background. We want to make sure that the background's appropriate. And we want to also make sure that there's not family members and other people in the house coming into that camera view. Because if the camera's on, we want to be able, we want the teacher to be able to see the student and only the students. We don't want to have to see other things in the background. Also, when logging in, we want to make sure we're using both your first and last name. So it's very important to include the stu your student's name when getting into a Zoom or Google Meet. Uh, also, appropriate virtual backgrounds. And then again, during discussion chats, I mentioned that already, we want to make sure there's proper language being used, no profanity being in there, uh, making sure we're, we're posting appropriate comments. And then the last thing, our protection and privacy of your student data is very important to the district. So there's nothing, nothing's going to be shared. The video conferencing uh, meetings do not get recorded. They are there just for the student to learn. The next thing I want to talk about is the ARIES student information system. So ARIES is where everything is posted uh, for grades, attendance, contact information. So a lot of teachers are posting assignments sometimes in ARIES as well. So they're posting them in the Google Classroom, but they're also posting the assignments in ARIES because that's where the grade book is located. So your child's grades are posted in Aries, and you'll be able to see how many missing assignments your child has by going into the, the parent portal in Aries. Also, your child should also have a student portal. So if you do not have a parent portal or a student portal set up, please reach out to the school site and we can help you get that created. And it's very important that both you and your child has portal access so you can monitor grades and communicate with your teachers on a daily basis. The next thing I want to talk about is iReady. So iReady is our online diagnostic program and in individualized um, personalized learning. So each child, each, each your child has taken a diagnostic test related to reading and mathematics. The diagnostic was, was, was uh, assigned to your student uh, in the first three weeks of the school year, and it provided where your child's current levels are at. So for example, in math, it'll give the, uh, your child a grade level of where they're at in terms of learning mathematics. They could be at a sixth grade level, they could be at a seventh grade level, or they could be at a lower level. They could be at a first grade or second grade or third grade level, and that is okay. What we wanna do is the program, once it di does the diagnostic and it notifies us what, where your child is at in terms of the spectrum, in terms of where their assessment is, if they're at a third grade level, for example, they will get provided instruction, personalized online instruction in math at that level to in hopefully increase your child's math skills so they can get to grade level math. So they're learning their grade level math in their math class. So let's just say your child is a sixth grader. They're getting sixth grade math on a daily basis in their math class. But if they test it at a third grade or fourth grade level, they are getting that third grade, fourth grade level math in the personalized instructional piece for iReady. So now that your child has completed the diagnostic, they have personalized instruction assigned to them at their level. So we encourage your child to do 45 minutes of reading and 45 minutes of mathematics each week in iReady. And this is something that can be done anytime throughout the day. So during, you know, after school is over with and your child's looking for something to do, maybe they do 15, 20 minutes of math work or reading work. But it is encouraged that they do 45 minutes each week of both reading and math. 
So here's what I was talking about, the iReady Diagnostic and the iReady Personalized Instruction. Those are the two things they use. Now, the iReady Diagnostic test is given three times a year. It's given at the beginning of the year, and your child has completed it by now, or at least they should have. Then they're going to do a middle of the year diagnostic and the end of the year diagnostic. This allows your teacher and our, the administration at the school site to monitor how they're doing throughout the year. And we want to monitor that growth. So the goal is if they're like at a fourth grade level at the beginning of the year, that hopefully they gain a lot of new skills throughout the school year and they can increase that and get to a fourth grade or fifth grade level. But while they're still learning their grade level math, or their grade level reading. And that's where the individualized personalized instruction comes in. The last thing I wanna talk about is Gaggle. Gaggle is a tool that the district uses to again, monitor the safety of your child while they're online. If a student posts something inappropriate, such as profanity, let's say in a Google Drive or a Google Doc, in a chat someplace, an admin gets notified at the school site. It's also being used for to monitor suicide prevention. If a student goes in and mentions something about suicidal thoughts, talks about wanting to kill themselves, we get notified instantly of this and we can reach out to the parents and reach out to the child, reach out to the counselors, reach out to the police department to make sure that we can do a wellness check and make sure your child is okay. So it's really a way to anticipate, guide, and prevent uh, different types of online safety and to make sure your child is safe and feeling good emotionally. So social emotional learning. So these are some of the things that we are doing at San Jacinto Unified School District and at Monta Vista Middle School and at North Monta Middle School to support your child during this virtual learning, to protect your child while they're online, and to monitor and make sure that they're doing the appropriate work while they're doing their distance learning model. We're hoping that we can get your child back in a classroom as soon as possible, but in the meantime, these resources can help you out while they are learning at home. Thank you.